So I just got a text from Pastor Mike. He's watching on live stream, and he said he could hear me talking backstage on live stream. <laughs> so he heard me pumping up the worship team as they were coming off. Way to bring it, way to bring it. So my apologies to live stream. So <clears throat> just a, a little uh, kingdom word, uh, Pastor Mike and, and Holly, they're, you notice they're not, they're not here today, and it's not because they're traveling the world or, or uh, in another country somewhere this week. Uh, Pastor uh, Billy White over at PC3 uh, didn't have anyone to speak this week, and he's on vacation. So Pastor Mike's giving the message over at PC3 today. So this, we got a kingdom, we got a kingdom mindset, and uh, and uh, we always want to be part of the kingdom. We gather together as pastors, and we encourage and lift each other up. And I know Pastor Josh has filled in over there at PC3 a couple of times. I think he's got one coming up in the near future again. So. Uh, we just love the kingdom of God, and we want to support and help in any way we can. I, I got a, a couple of people that I, I'd really like to thank publicly here this morning. Uh, you heard Ryan mention the cafe, and we did our grand opening last week. And it, it, there's two guys that, that really spearheaded that. At first, I want to thank John Butler. He's right there. Uh, give him a big hand. You, you don't, just don't realize how much time and effort and relational equity that he put in with the city, making the connections, talking with the city, finding out what we needed to do. He got us rolling. He got the connections. And all the personal relationships that he made up front made the back end a lot easier as all the inspectors were coming to do the inspections. So, and, and Greg stepped up and really, Greg Schnepp right there, give him a big hand. Stepped up and brought the project home, and that man just spent hours and hours there, sweat equity, uh, and uh, we just love these guys, and just one more time together, give them a big hand, because they did an amazing job. We're in our, our Summer at Life Coast series, and uh, if you've been with us, we've uh, gone through a journey here uh, in the summer, and uh, we've been talking a lot about all things are spiritual. And you remember as we opened up this series, we, we talked about Genesis when God created the uh, two um, entities in the sky to mark the days and the weeks and years and seasons. And so everything is spiritual. God had a purpose for the different seasons. And in this, this season of summer, we're just kind of going to look at everything that we put into summer that has a spiritual purpose context to it. We may not think it does, but because all things are spiritual, we need to start looking at the physical and seeing all the spiritual truths that come from everything we see in this physical world. The first message we talked about, um, you know, what are you doing and why are you doing it? So we work, we work, we work. Why? So we can take a summer vacation we can, we can get a reward for all the hard work we did. And that first week we talked about our crowns of reward that we're going to lay at Jesus' feet. And so we work in this, in this life for the spiritual reward of receiving crowns that we will be able to lay at Jesus' feet because the only reason we receive them is because of what he did for us on the cross. Can I get a good amen there? And so the second message was uh, we talked about mountains and, and climbing the mountains and getting out of the city and getting to the mountains and having a higher perspective and, and having a breath of fresh air and then seeing all the other mountaintops. Do you remember that? Because when you, when you have a mountaintop prayer life, Jesus went to the mountains often to pray. It says it over and over again in the scriptures that he went to the mountain to pray. Because when you have a mountaintop prayer experience, it's like a breath of fresh air. And, and you get a higher perspective of what's going on around you. And you get to see all the other mountaintops, all the other highs that you can achieve as you walk with Jesus. As you go down into the valley sometimes, you've got to go down into the valley before you can get up to the next mountain. And so we talked about prayer and having a mountaintop prayer life. And then we went to a day at the beach. Pastor Caleb came, brought that message. Remember that? You pack up all your stuff. If you and your family go into the beach, you pack up all your stuff because someone might need something. 
You're going to be out on the beach and you pack everything. You got, you're walking out there and you look, you look silly. You're carrying, you're dragging, you're pulling, and you got all this stuff. Why? Because someone might need something. And that week we had our, our life coast on the beach on the 4th of July where we gathered our resources. We brought as many resources as we could so we could bless the people on the beach who may have had needs. And hundreds and hundreds and hundreds came to that tent and we gave away 816 hot dogs and countless hundreds of bottles of water and freeze pops and watermelon and, and uh, they just came and came and came because as it says in Hebrews, they gave to everyone who had need and gained the favor of all the people and the Lord added to their number daily those who are being saved. So we want to reach out to the community, and that was part of what we did. That's why sometimes we, we bring everything we can to go to the beach because someone might have a need. And so uh, last week we talked about uh, family time. In the summer we all get away maybe to a family reunion or we go visit family. We're intentional because maybe our family's growing bigger, spreading out, and so we get intentional about visiting family. And we came to the understanding that God started with family way back in Genesis so we would understand what it is to have the family of God. If we didn't know what a family was, a physical family, and the natural family, we wouldn't understand what the family of God is all about. The term would be foreign to us. So God gave us the physical for us to understand the spiritual. And so we need to understand that our family, our spiritual family, the Life Coast family, the family of God is a gift and it's a blessing and we're here for each other. And yeah, we may have struggles, we may have tension because guess what? I, I saw all the hands go up and I said, how many of you have had struggles in your family from time to time? And every hand just about went up. There was a couple that didn't. I asked them if I could move in, but they said no because um, they said you'll probably bring struggle. But... Uh, <laughs> But we do have struggles, but there's nothing wrong with families that struggle. What's wrong is if we just ignore it, right? If we just ignore the struggles. But if we engage the struggle, then the family gets, becomes closer and closer and closer. And we love when the family grows, whether we have new babies in the family or we have uh, weddings and we have a new family member. That way we love when the family grows. And so this week, we're going to talk a little bit about working and going on vacation. How many of you have ever had a working vacation? Sounds like an oxymoron, but how many, a working vacation. We got a few of you, yeah. As I shared in the rally that we have a service for all of our serve team members, working at the prison, I was never afforded the working vacation because they wouldn't let me let the, take the inmates home. I don't I understand that, but... It's uh, no working vacation at the prison, always just a vacation. But working vacations are an interesting concept in that you get away for a break, but you are working while you're there. And it takes a certain understanding to be able to accomplish the working vacation. And I think that God has some spiritual truth for us to understand within the working vacation and that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's bow our heads and pray. Father God, we thank you so much for the season of summer. There's so much that goes on during this season. Everybody looks at it as, as a time of refreshment, a time of relaxation, a time of getting away, a time of reward, uh, just a time when all things kind of come together for people, for families to spend time together. This summer season that you've given us has so many spiritual truths just buried within it that, Lord, we need to step up out of the natural and into the spiritual, that none of these things are here by accident, that you've designed them all to give us a picture, a better picture, a clearer picture of what you're doing in the spiritual. And the most amazing thing about it, Lord, May we all realize that we're invited to be a part of it. To do your work for your glory, for your kingdom, to the praise of your son Jesus. And it's in his name we pray, amen. 
All right, so a working vacation. There's a few requirements that you have to have if you're going to be afforded the working vacation. So some of you might have owned your own business, so you didn't even look at yourself as needing the requirements. But if you had an employee or you were an employee and you were going to take a working vacation, your boss or the business owner would require a few things that he would have to see or she would have to see in you in order to afford you the working vacation. Now, I know that my wife is amazing at the working vacation. I looked and looked for pictures because I knew I took one. So we're driving on vacation last summer, and I even think the summer before, and she's got her, her phone up on the dashboard with the hotspot firing up. She's got her laptop open. I'm driving down the highway. We're heading to wherever our destination is. She's got her laptop up. She's got her books open. She's got notebooks, and she's writing, and she's pencil in the mouth. She's, she's working while we're driving on the Internet. Crazy to me. I don't understand this. You know, I don't even understand the Internet when you plug it in, never mind driving through the, on the highway. But she is working vacation. And, that, you know, that she, she wants to earn her keep. And she's a, she's a keeper. So, so, but that's the working vacation means that the employee fully trusts her. The employee under, has given her trust. Here's the first thing you need to know about a working vacation. You have to have a job. Okay? If you don't have a job, you can't have a working vacation. You are already on vacation. So you got to have a job to have the working vacation. And you think, that sounds funny, but here's the spiritual truth of it. Some people in the spiritual don't realize that they have a job. They think they're on vacation in the spiritual. They think that just because I've called on the name of Jesus as my Lord and Savior, they think it's like, I don't know, government assistance or something. They don't have to go to work every day. And I'm not trying to say anything bad about government assistance, but that people who call on the name of Jesus as Lord and Savior, they think they got their ticket punched and they're all set. They don't have to do anything else. And that couldn't be further from the truth. You need to understand and you need to know that you got to get a job in the kingdom. Okay? You're not, you don't got the free ticket to the kingdom. Jesus paid the price for salvation. So you do have salvation. It's free. It's clear. We talked about that when we talked about crowns and rewards. That we don't work for salvation. We work because of salvation. But there's still work. So we don't want to think your destination's all clear. And now you can just sit back and relax. Jesus, come on. Come and take me. I'm ready to go. I'm just going to sit here and wait. Because that's not what happens. But you have to have a job. And here's the most important thing for your boss. You need to know your job. You need to know your job. Your boss isn't going to let you have a working vacation if they don't think you know what you're doing within your job. And here's here's the third thing. You have to have the trust of your boss. If your boss is going to let you go and have a working vacation, they're going to trust you that, that you're going to do the work, that you know your job. You're going to do the right thing. The third one is you, you have to manage your time well if you're going to have a, a working vacation. You have to, if, because if you're going to be on vacation, you've got to get the work done. So you have to be able to manage your time well. Just like Stacy, as we're driving down the road, she wants to get there and have a vacation so the drive is not wasted time. She does all her work in the drive time. She managed her time well. See, but all things are spiritual. All things are spiritual. So do you have a job in the kingdom? Do you have a job? And here, here, it's running through your head. Do I have a job in the kingdom? What's my job in the kingdom? Well, everybody's job comes right out of Matthew 28, 19. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit... And lo, I am with you even to the very end of the age. So you have a job. Everyone's basic function, everyone's job is to make disciples. That's your, everyone's basic function. Everyone needs to know that basic job. But within that, God has a calling for every single one of us. 
God has a job for each of us to do. Everyone has specific calling on their life. Do you believe that you have a calling on your life? Do you really believe it? I heard like two mouse-like yeses in there. Uh, yes, I believe I have a calling. I, I'm telling you, I was just like you. I sat in church for years and years and years. Knowing that, that there's got to be more. And understanding that once I realize that there's a calling, that there's a calling that's just for me. There's work that God prepared just for me. That made a huge difference. Look at Ephesians 2.10. It says this. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good work, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So when Jesus said, let there be light, and it all started firing out, and everything started to be created, do you know that before that, in advance of that, he had already figured out what your job was and what you were going to be doing, and he already had the work all set out for you to do. Before he said, let there be light. Whoa. That's how important you are to God. That's how important the job is that you have. Do you have a job? Do you have a job? Hmm. You need to have a job in the spiritual. You need to have a spiritual job. In this verse, 1 Corinthians 12.1 now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. Some of your translations may say, I do not want you to be ignorant. Ignorant. Because guess what? Your job, your work is specifically tied to your spiritual gifts. So do you know your job? Not just you have a job. You got, do you have a job? Yes, I have a job. I get it. God's called me. I need to spread the gospel. I need to be the gospel. I need to be the church. I get that. I want to do that. But what, how do I do that? That means you don't know your job. You don't know your job. In the spiritual, God has given us each spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. And they're different than natural gifts. Everybody gets a natural ability of one kind or another. Everybody gets them. They're like grits in the south. You order dinner, you get them. That's the, you just get them when you're born. You get natural gifts. But spiritual gifts are only for those who have called on the name of Jesus as Lord and Savior and indwelled by the Holy Spirit. You get a spiritual gift. That's awesome. That's amazing. And you know what? If you get involved with Life Track and you go to engage, we try to help you discover what your spiritual gifts are. Isn't that cool? Yeah, a couple of you think that's really cool. The rest of you are like, I'm still wondering what my job is. I don't know. How do I know what I, how to do my job if I don't even know what my job is? Everybody's got a job. Yeah, your time's up. You've got to know your spiritual job. We want to help you to discover your spiritual job. My father, when I first started to work in the prison, he said to me, you know, it's going to seem like you can just get away with just doing whatever you're doing. They're going to assign you somewhere. You're going to have a certain amount of duties. And the culture there is to just do the minimal amount of work possible. That's the culture in a prison for everyone who works there. If you haven't worked there, you kind of know that. And then there's a few that stand out. Why do they stand out? Because they don't just want to know their job. They want to know all the jobs. And that's what my father tried to instill in me. Don't just know your job. This is a freebie, too, for all you young people in the workforce. Don't just know your job. Know everyone's job around you. You want to stand out? You want to become indispensable in wherever you're working? Learn all the jobs. Learn them all. Take the time. Step up. Then your boss will see you, and they will want to show favor on you. Okay? This is a kingdom principle. Don't just know your job. Know all the jobs. This is a spiritual principle. Don't just know your gifts. Know all the gifts. You don't have to have them, but know them. So you can identify those who do have them when you need them. And then... So that's where the family comes in. That was last week's message. But you got to know 
your job. You have to know your spiritual job. You have to be involved, engaged, and fully committed to your spiritual job and every job within the kingdom. 1 Thessalonians 2.4 says this, On the contrary, we speak as those approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We are not trying to please people, but God who tests our hearts. Remember I said, you have to have the trust of your boss to go on a working vacation. Well, this verse in 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 4, says that God is trusting all of you, all of us, with the gospel, with our job. You are trusted with the gospel by your boss, God, the Father. You're trusted. God trusts you with your spiritual job. He trusts you with it. What are you going to do with that trust? Are you going to learn your job? Are you going to know your job? Are you going to engage in your job? Or are you just going to sit there and take that trust and not do anything with it? Not share the gospel. Not share the gifts that you have. Not discover your spiritual gifts. Not find out what everyone else's spiritual gifts are. Are you just going to exist in the kingdom of God? And then Ephesians 5, 15 uh, 5, 15 and 16 says this, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Manage your time, your spiritual time well. Because I just want to share with you right now, I firmly believe the clock is ticking and ticking and ticking. And we have to manage our spiritual time well for our spiritual job because we need to understand that there are things going on that we need to engage in. We need to take the time to see where God is working so that we can step into that work because He's at His work all the time. And Jesus said that. He's at His work. We need to step into that work. I'm going to read from 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 5. We're going to walk through this a little bit because this talks about the working vacation, the spiritual working vacation. So, first, 2 Timothy, excuse me, 2 Timothy 4, verses 1 through 5. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you, keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. Now I realize that Paul is talking to Timothy, who is a pastor, but ministry is not limited to pastors. We've talked about that. Ephesians 4.10 is that the pastors, evangelists, shepherds, prophets, apostles, their job, and teachers, their job is to equip the body, equip the saints for the ministry. So my job, the job of the leaders here at Life Goes, is to equip the saints, equip the believers for the work of the ministry. So this verse applies to all of us. Be prepared. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. So what does that mean? When it's convenient and when it's not convenient. When you're on vacation and when you're not on vacation. It's, it's not going to be convenient all the time to be a believer. To be advancing the kingdom. To be doing your job as a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. It's not 
always going to be convenient. Can I get a good amen on that? I think everybody understands that. It's not always convenient. I want to look at some of these words because as we break down some of these words and we start to understand exactly what Paul is writing to Timothy here, I think we'll get a better grasp of what the process is supposed to be. So be prepared in season and out of season. Be prepared in the Greek is episteme. Episteme. And literally, it's, it's, it's translated correct, and that's not an incorrect translation. It is correct. But literally, the word breaks down into two parts, epi and histeme. And it means stand up. Epi is up. Esteem is stand. So stand up. So, so when you're going to correct someone, that means you have to take a stand. That means you have to say, oh, wait a minute. Let's talk about that. Hang on a second. What you said really is not quite right. So you need to stand up. Don't just sit back and let someone else or wait for someone else to do the job that you're called to do. Be prepared. Correct. Stand, uh, be prepared. Stand up. The next word is correct. And that's, the, that's the correct. El ego. El enko. El ego. Depending on which Greek class you took. And that means call to account. So stand up. Stand up. When someone speaks something that may not be true or they may be going in a bad direction, stand up and say something. Stand up and say something. Don't just let someone wander away from the faith. Don't just let someone speak things that are not true to the word of God. Don't just let people be lost. Be prepared to speak the truth. Be prepared to stand up. Be prepared to call people to account. This, the third word there, rebuke. In the Greek, epitimao, epitimao. This was the best word study of the week, let me tell you. I was all over this thing. I was in this word study. I was in this uh, kittle. I was in this Greek study book. I was doing, oh, I was all over the place because this word is unbelievable. It's a compound word just like the other one, epi, which means up or lift. And then timao which actually means to raise the price or increase the value. An incredible word. Everywhere in the Bible, it is translated rebuke. Every single place, it's translated rebuke, 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 rebuke. Every single time. But that is actually like its fifth possible meaning. It's, it's like, it's way down the list on what it means. When you look at it this way, Raise the price, raise the value of. So when you're prepared, you're standing up, you're correcting someone because they've done something wrong. Why are you doing that? So you raise their value because you value them. You raise the value of truth. You raise the value of who they are to God. Every person, every person, every person is loved by God. Let's raise the value. Let's raise their value. If we're going to rebuke someone, let's look at them as valuable and let's raise their value. Let's not just look at them, well, they're wrong, they're going to hell. We're not going to take, we should be looking at them and saying, they're lost and they're going to hell. Let's raise their value. Let's bring them the gospel. Let's bring them the truth. Let's value them more than they value themselves and see what God does with that. That's rebuking. The next one is encourage, parakaleo. This is cool. This is really cool because some of you who know Greek already know where I'm going with this. Because parakaleo is the same root word that is used in John 14, 16, when Jesus says, I will send you another, a comforter, a paraclete. I will send you another and he will come and be your comforter. So this Encourage is actually come alongside. Become the paraclete for them. Become the comforter for them. Not the comforter, a comforter. Because only the comforter can be the comforter. 
Only the Holy Spirit is the comforter. But you have the Holy Spirit indwelling you. So by virtue of that, you can be a paraclete to someone who doesn't know Jesus as Lord and Savior because you're bringing the Holy Spirit alongside them. You come to comfort them. So we're going to stand up. We are going to call to account what they got wrong. And we're going to value them. We're going to raise their value. Let them know how important they are. That they have a place in the kingdom of God. That we want them to be a part of this family that we call the family of God. It's so important that we raise their value. And that we come alongside them and let them know that there's a comforter. That there's, there's a Holy Spirit who wants to indwell them and come alongside them. And we can, we can model that by coming alongside them and walking with them towards truth. Towards knowing Jesus as Lord and Savior. The, the last part of this that's not in your notes, this is a freebie. You do this with great patience and careful instruction. Which really, to me, validates that literal translation of raising the price and comforting people alongside with great patience. The Greek word there means an endurance and a constancy. That means you keep in there. You keep doing it. You keep walking with them. Even if they keep saying things that aren't true, even if they keep doing things that are hurting them or not in their best interest, not the kingdom of God, not the way the Bible says to do it, you hang in there in season and out of season. You keep walking with people so they see the grace of God and they understand who you are in the kingdom and they want to be part of the kingdom as well. Can I get a good amen on that? See, because the spiritual truth is one of our core values is we are missional. And what does that mean? Life Coast Church is missional. That means in season and out of season. I know the gospel tell. I mean, I know that the, the, the book of Genesis, the, the word of God tells us that we should take rest that we should take time off. Pastor Josh is going to talk about that in a couple of days. I want to make sure I distinguish between a spiritual rest and a physical rest. Because what Genesis is talking about is taking rest from your physical work. But what I'm talking about is that there's a spiritual rest that we think that we're taking in this lifetime. And the truth is, is that our spiritual rest is found in Jesus Christ. Our spiritual rest is in eternity. My beautiful wife, Miss Stacy, we were talking in the back before church ever started. And, and uh, someone said, Hi, aren't you tired? you got so much going on. The, the, your house is full of people. You're singing on the worship team. You're, 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 you're discipling with multiple women. Aren't you tired? And she said, I'll rest in heaven. I'll rest in heaven. That's got to be our attitude. She's my hero. We'll rest in heaven when we get that rest in Jesus Christ. That's the spiritual rest. But right now, we got to step up, church. We got to say, we're on a mission. We're on a mission. We're a missional church. We're on a mission. Every day we're out there, we're on a mission. Even if we feel like it's our day off, guess what? Working vacation. Working vacation. We've got to have our eyes open. We're going to be looking. We're going to be looking to get our crowns. We're going to be looking to lead people to Christ. We're going to be looking to stand up to raise the value of people. So they see the value in them as much as we see the value in them because we see them through the eyes of Jesus Christ who died on the cross for them. That's their value. That's their value. That's your value. Your job is so important. You've got to know it. How important you are to the kingdom of God. That God has invited each and every one of us to be part of what he's doing. John 5, 17, Jesus said... My Father is at work to this very day, and I am working too. And guess what? He's inviting each and every one of you to join in the work. And here's the amazing thing about it. 
I shared in another message, I don't know, several months ago, that some of the first vacations we took were back to Massachusetts, where we were from, and the church that we left was in turmoil and, and just, just all kinds of crazy stuff going on. But we had, even though we went away from ministry here, we drove into ministry there. We looked around, there were so many hurting people, it was impossible, impossible to stop and rest. But guess what? The kingdom of God is advancing. People were hurting. They needed to see their value. They were feeling low. They were feeling hurting. They were feeling worthless. And we needed to come alongside them and raise them up to a higher standard that you got to do your work. And here's the coolest thing. Even though it was hard, even though it was difficult, even though it was taxing, Every time I drove away from there, every time I drove away from someone, I felt the rest that only Jesus brings. Because we're doing his work. He's going he's gonna to give us the strength. He's going to be our portion. He, the joy of the Lord is our strength. That's where strength comes from. That's where rest comes from. That's where peace comes from. Is when we're doing what we're called to do. When we connect with our spiritual gifts and we act in spiritual fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those are the things that lift you up. Those are the things that give you rest. Those are the things that set you on a place of peace. And here's the spiritual truth. Kingdom work has no days off, only working vacations. Do you believe that? Stand up with me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invite you this morning. I know that a message like this doesn't necessarily make you want to rally to the cross to become a believer because you don't want to come down and say, I throw all my days off on the cross. But here's the truth. I've never felt more purpose. I've never felt more joy. I've never felt more peace. I've never felt more comfort. I've never felt more fulfilled. And I finally said to Jesus, all my days belong to you. All my days. Even my days off. Even my vacations. They all belong to you because the kingdom is advancing and God has invited us to be part of his kingdom advancing so I'm going to invite you this morning if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior if you don't know what your job is I'm going to invite you right now to pray and receive him as Lord and Savior as everyone bows their eyes or their heads and closes their eyes. I'm going to pray this simple prayer. If you want to receive Jesus as Lord, you just, you just say that prayer where you are. Jesus Christ, I realize I, I'm lost in this world. I have no direction. I give all my days to you. I call on the name of Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I know that you died for my sins were buried and raised on the third day to conquer sin and death on my behalf. Thank you, Jesus. I give my heart to you. So as, you, as your heads rain down, your eyes closed, if you prayed that prayer, just put your hand up. Just put your hand up quick, right where you are so I can see it. Amen. Thank you. I'm going to ask you to take one more step. I'm not going to embarrass you to come down, but if you have a Connect card, I would like you to write on that card your name and just check that you gave your heart to Jesus today. There's a box on that card for you to check that. And you can hand that in at the tent on your way out. We want to connect with you. We want to walk with you for your next step. We're going to sing worship to the king. We're going to, we're going to pour our hearts out to Jesus. You don't know what your job is. Prayer team members are on the sides here. You just want to ask him. You just want to say, God, how do, I, how do I discover my job? How do I know my job? And if you want to find out what your gift set is, again, go to that Connect card and say, I want to know what my next step is. 
and we'll connect with you and get you involved in your next step with Life Track and Engage Class so you can find out what your spiritual gift is. You can know your job and everyone else's job. And the kingdom of God will advance like you never saw before in your life. Father God, we praise you and thank you that we have the opportunity to make a difference in this city and in this county. That your kingdom is advancing and you've invited us to be a part of it. But we have to understand. we got to know that there's a job for us. We have to know what our job is. We have to know that you've trusted us with your gospel. And we have to manage our time well because the days are short. That when you give us an opportunity, that we step into it. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you need prayer, come down. Meet with the prayer team. If you receive Jesus, just write it out on the card and turn it in.